If you're like me, then you probably have one or two of those remotely controlled sockets lying around. By simply inserting them into an outlet and plugging in your AC appliance, you can use the included remote to wirelessly turn on slash off all kinds of appliances. That means there must be some kind of switch inside the remotely controlled sockets that can handle mains voltage. So let's grab the suitable bits and crack this thing open. On the inside we can see a fuse, a radio frequency PCB, an HX2272IC, which is a remote control encoder, and a suspicious looking box that makes a clicking sound every time we turn on or off these sockets. This component is called a relay, which is, in a nutshell, an electromechanical switch. You sometimes find such relays next to a 4-pin IC, like this 817IC right here, which according to its datasheet is a so-called optocoupler. But what kind of relationship do those two components share? Well, we are about to find out in this Electronic Basics episode, in which we will learn what makes those two components special, when to use them and most importantly how to use them properly. Let's get started. First off, let's have a closer look at relays, which exist in a variety of different looks, but in general they all share the same functional principle. If we open one up, we can see that it basically consists of a coil and at least two contacts. On the enclosure of the relay, we also often find useful information. If not, then you need to google the part number and use the datasheet instead. Anyway, our relay casing states a coil voltage of 5 volts, which means that by applying this voltage to the pins of the coil, current will flow through it, which thus creates a magnetic field, attracts the anchor on top of the coil and therefore closes the previously open contacts. This way the switch is now closed and thus could connect our appliance to mains voltage. The symbol of a common relay looks like this with the coil on the left side and the NO switch on the right side. NO stands for normally open, which describes the state of the contacts when the coil is not energized. There are also NC switches, aka normally closed switches and changeover contacts, which consist of three contact points and basically provides both switch options. Of course there exist voltage and current limitations for those switches which you can find on the relay itself or once again in the datasheet. Another important aspect is that when you apply a too low voltage to the coil, this switch will not activate or behave unreliable due to the low magnetic force. But on the other hand, if you apply a too high voltage, the overcurrent may heat up your coil excessively and thus cause a coil short circuit, which renders your relay unusable. At this point you should be able to create a simple relay circuit that for example turns on slash off a small light bulb. And while it may look like everything works flawlessly, there is a big problem. If we measure the voltage across the push button that I use to power the coil, we can see that there are voltage spikes of above 200 volts every time the coil de-energizes. The switch does survive this, but if we would replace it with a transistor, then there is a big chance that this transistor will not live for very long. The reason is that the collapsing magnetic field induces a current which creates an overvoltage due to the open circuit. So the solution is to add a flyback diode parallel to the coil so that the current can flow and thus prevent the overvoltage. And with that being done our simple light bulb circuit works without a problem. But you might be asking yourself, why do I not simply use a MOSFET when switching DC or a triac when switching AC? So let's imagine we create such switching circuits and our load draws 10 amps of current. The problem is that both the MOSFET and triac possess a voltage drop, which multiplied by the current equals the power loss of the switch. The contacts of a relay however have such a small voltage drop at 10 amps that it features the lowest power loss. 
even if we add the power the relay coil requires. Next, the MOSFET's control voltage and the load we want to switch need the same voltage ground potential, while the relay's control and load ground potential does not have to be the same. We can use 5 volts from a microcontroller and turn on 230 volts at the switch without having to worry that the microcontroller could get destroyed by 230 volts accidentally touching the control signal. That means both circuit parts are galvanically isolated from one another, which is an important safety feature. But of course, while a MOSFET can be used to dim a light source efficiently through PWM, the relay is way too slow for that, since it is still partly a mechanical switch. So in conclusion, a relay is great at switching big loads with low power losses while providing a galvanic isolation. But on the other hand, they are slow and their contacts will wear out over time. But what about the optocoupler I talked about earlier? For that, let's go back to the Triac Switch AC circuit. To power its gates, and thus turn on the triac, we need a switch that connects the AC voltage to it. A relay would in this example not work, since we want to control the phase angle at a frequency of 50Hz. Instead, we could use an optocoupler, which is also known as an opto-isolator, which should make its function a bit more clear. On the inside, it consists of an infrared LED and a photosensitive sensor, which is nowadays mostly a transistor or a triac. Thus, by applying the 4V voltage mentioned in the datasheet to the IR LED, it lights up and therefore activates the transistor or triac on the other side, which thus activates the AC mains voltage triac we talked about earlier, since the optocoupler triac can also handle up to 400 volts. And since the input and output side of the optocoupler are just like the relay galvanically isolated, there's no harm for our control microcontroller signal, since the isolation voltage goes up to 7500 volts in this case. Of course, a transistor-based optocoupler cannot switch that high of a voltage, but it can, for example, turn on a second transistor, which then can turn on the coil of a relay. Which brings us back to the example we started with. This way, the circuit offers a double galvanic isolation, which is a very safe environment for our microcontroller signal. So, in conclusion, optocouplers can switch faster than relays, provide galvanic isolation and need less activation current. But on the other hand, they cannot handle big loads, which is why they are sometimes next to relays. Of course, there are more advanced applications for optocouplers as well, but for now you should be familiar with the basics and be able to create some amazing projects. As always, thanks for watching, don't forget to like, share and subscribe, stay creative and I will see you next time.